Hey there, Internet! My name's Lexander, and today I thought that it would be fun to do the political compass test. I'm pretty sure I know where I sit on, like, a political spectrum, but I find myself a little bit uncomfortable with some of the labels that exist in the area where my political views are, so I thought it would be fun to, like, take a test and have it tell me where I land on that. It's been a long time since I did a recording balancing this many things. It's been about two years since I used Bandicam, so I apologize preemptively if anything goes weird or if my webcam freezes up and I don't notice. I'm sure you're all excited to start though, so let's go. All right, so this is the political compass test. As you can see, it says up here, political compass. And it's a test that has questions that are supposed to be like independent of like whatever is going on politically at the moment. It's like an all around how you are politically kind of Thing. So all hemming and hawing out of the way, let's actually get started. Page one of six, just a few propositions to start with concerning, no less, how you see the country and the world. If economic globalization is inevitable, it should primarily serve humanity rather than the interests of transnational corporations. So it's making a statement and I'm supposed to say whether I agree or disagree over here. I think that economies in general should primarily serve human interests rather than the interests of corporations, so I'm going to say Yes, I strongly agree to that. I'd always support my country whether it was right or wrong. I am gonna say I strongly disagree with that. I don't really understand people who are really like intensely into patriotism. It's like never been something that I get, so I'm just gonna go ahead and strongly disagree with that one. No one chooses their country of birth, so it's foolish to be proud of it. Yeah, so kind of related to the last question, literally since I was 12 or 13, I've always thought it's really strange that people are intensely attached to the idea of the country in the place that they just happen to be born, so I'm going to strongly agree that it's kind of foolish to be proud of. It's like, why It's like why do you support that sports team? You support that sports team because you happened to grow up in the area where that sports team is a thing. So yeah, I strongly agree. <laughs> oh boy, our race has many superior qualities compared with other races. I'm gonna say strongly disagree for hopefully obvious reasons. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. I'm not really sure what this is supposed to mean politically, if I'm being honest. I would probably say politically the biggest, like, enemy as a concept to me is like someone who is virulently anti-trans and I don't know anyone who would be the opposite of someone who's virulently anti-trans who wouldn't also just be my friend in the first place politically. But I guess also in politics it's really important to be willing to compromise on certain things and if you have someone who is going to be able to ally with you on certain things like maybe I'm just gonna go ahead and soft agree so that I can move on from this one. Military action that defies international law is sometimes justified. I generally assume that international consensus on things that are inappropriate to do as far as military action is it's been thought over and discussed enough that like you shouldn't maybe violate those rules, like it's probably a bad idea. I don't know that I could consider breaking international law to be justified ever, so I'm gonna soft disagree with this one. And the last one on the first page, there is now a worrying fusion of information and entertainment. This one's kind of tough because it depends on where you're getting your information from. Like, I think that it's really useful to have entertaining sources of information because it makes it easily digestible, but you also have this, like, sort of climate nowadays where essentially it can be hard to tell whether information is coming from a good place, and a lot of it is kind of made to give you, like, an override of your emotions over your actual logical thinking, but I don't think that on its own entertaining ways of portraying information are bad, so I'm gonna soft disagree on this one and move to the next page. <gasps> Boom! Now the economy. We're talking attitudes here, not the FTSE index. And the first one on this page, people are ultimately divided more by class than by nationality. Oh, so like in my view, ultimately is the divide more about class than by nationality. Yeah, I'm gonna strongly agree with that. I think that the class disparity around the world is just getting increasingly wider and I don't think that's good. So yeah, are people ultimately divided more by class than by nationality? Yeah, ultimately I would say I strongly agree with that. Controlling inflation is more important than controlling unemployment. I think you want to have like checks and balances on both of those things, like you definitely want to have controls on unemployment, however that's done, but I also think that inflation has done more damage to the economy 
because as inflation has increased, wages are not being kept up to a steady rate to like compensate for the fact that your dollar just has less buying power more and more over time. So I'm gonna give a soft agree to this one. Because corporations cannot be trusted to voluntarily protect the environment, they require regulation. Hard agree. All right, this one is starting with a quote. So quote, from each according to his ability to each according to his need is a fundamentally good idea. So I think that this is kind of relating to taxes and uh, then support programs. So like from each according to his ability, I think in this context is supposed to mean, and if I'm wrong, I'm so sorry, but I think it's supposed to mean like you would take a proportionate amount of taxes from someone who has like the ability to give more. And then when you're giving out like financial help to people, you would give them to according to their need. And I, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and soft agree to that because I'm worried that I don't understand it properly. So if somebody wants to explain that to me better, feel free to let me know in the comments. It's a sad reflection on our society that something as basic as drinking water is now a bottled branded consumer product hard agree. Land shouldn't be a commodity to be bought and sold. I feel like this one is kind of hard for me to have an opinion about because uh, I live on stolen colonized land, but it is kind of a weird concept. The idea that like we live on a planet that has land and you walk on it and there's like basically none of it that isn't kind of owned by someone. Like essentially even public lands are owned by the government. It's like a nice concept though to like have land that you own and have like a certain amount of control over what you can do on the land but then again if everyone had some then like everyone would be able to essentially do what they wanted with it. I think I'm gonna go ahead and give this one a soft degree. It is regrettable that many personal fortunes are made by people who simply manipulate money and contribute nothing to their society. Uh yeah hard agree. Protectionism is sometimes necessary in trade. I'm gonna go ahead and look up what protectionism means. So protectionism is the theory or practice of shielding a country's domestic industries from foreign competition by taxing imports. This is kind of a hard one because I don't think that a country should be solely responsible for all of the production in the country, but we also live in an economy globally where, in the United States at least, a lot of the outsourced labor is essentially slave labor. But no, I think I'm gonna go ahead and soft agree, or soft disagree to this one, I mean, because I don't think that you should just be on principle preventing competition from other countries. Like, isn't that what capitalism is supposed to be all about? It's supposed to be all about there being a good market for competition. I don't understand why it would be any different if it's like foreign or domestic competition. I don't know. I'm gonna go ahead and do a soft disagree to that one. The only social responsibility of a company should be to deliver a profit to its shareholders. Hard disagree. Social responsibility of a company extends to taking care of its employees. The rich are too highly taxed. Strong disagree. Those with the ability to pay should have access to higher standards of medical care. Strongly disagree. If you're a human being, you deserve equal access to medical care. Governments should penalize businesses that mislead the public. Yep. A genuine free market requires restrictions on the ability of predator multinationals to create monopolies. Yes. The freer the market, the freer the people. I don't think so. I think that the fewer regulations you have on a market, the more difficult it will actually be for people to uh, be able to make good economic choices that will actually benefit them in the long run. So I'm gonna go ahead and soft disagree to that one, and boom! Ooh boy, this one's gonna get real spicy real quick. Now, a look at some of your personal social values. Abortion, when the person's life is not threatened, should always be illegal. That is a strong disagree from me. All authority should be questioned. I'm gonna strongly agree. I don't think that it's possible to have a, like, truly consensual government if you're not allowed to question the authorities. Like, that should be a give-and-take relationship. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. I'm gonna go ahead and strongly disagree to that. Taxpayers should not be expected to prop up any theaters or museums that cannot survive on a commercial basis. I'm gonna strongly disagree to that because I think that art is like a fundamental aspect of human expression and museums are like a thing to preserve history and to preserve art in some cases. So like those things should be a little bit more like publicly accessible. And like, I think that there's a lot of ways in which a museum couldn't be excessively profitable. So yeah, I'm just gonna strongly disagree. 
and then move on. Schools should not make classroom attendance compulsory. So if attendance is compulsory, then that means that there are punishments that will go along with compelling people to go. And I think that there is a degree to which there should be more options for kids to learn outside of that context. And so like, if you have a really strong interest in something as a 12 year old and you want to like take a year to like devotedly study, I don't know, how to make apps, for example. I saw like a 12 or 13 year old kid give a TED talk on the fact that his parents allowed him to do like homeschooling. I think that that should be an option for kids who are not making it very well in a public class kind of environment. So I'm gonna go ahead and give a soft agree to that one. Ooh, all people have their rights, but it is better for all of us that different sorts of people should keep to their own kind. Strong disagree. I'm very sorry, I didn't know that corporal punishment was going to be on this list of questions. I went into this blind. Good parents sometimes have to spank their children. Strongly disagree. All of the scientific data that's available on this tells us that it's bad for children to hit them, basically. You're a grown adult, you should not hit a child. It's natural for children to keep some secrets from their parents. I'm gonna strongly agree. I think that privacy is important and like, you should have a relationship that's founded on trust and if your kid doesn't feel safe telling you something, then you need to work on your relationship with them. But it's natural for kids to have little things that they keep to themselves. Possessing marijuana for personal use should not be a criminal offense. Strongly agree. I think people should be able to do what they want with their own bodies, especially if the substances have not been proven to be harmful in any way. The prime function of schooling should be to equip the future generation to find jobs. I have kind of mixed feelings on this one because I like the idea of pursuing education for education's sake and just learning for learning's sake, but I also understand that we live in an economy and in a world where you do want to be equipped to find work later, so your primary schooling, I think, should probably at least try to equip you to find jobs. Now, especially middle school and high school in the United States is really more about equipping you for college, which I don't think is very beneficial. I think that we should be more encouraging of people to go into trades and other forms of work that don't require college, especially because of the amount of debt that you can get into nowadays with that. Um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and give a soft agree to that one. Yikes, oh boy, I did not know that eugenics was going to come up in this either. Again, I apologize. People with serious inheritable disabilities should not be allowed to reproduce. Strongly disagree. I'm not, not into eugenics, thanks. The most important thing for children to learn is to accept discipline. No. There are no savage and civilized peoples, there are only different cultures. Strongly agree. Ooh. Those who are able to work and refuse the opportunity should not expect society's support. Well, but what if you're... if you want to dedicate your life to being a parent? It's not like that's not labor, it's just a different kind of labor, and it's technically not one where you're producing excess, like, wealth for a company. That one's a really tough one and a kind of complicated one, so I'm just gonna give a soft disagree to that one because I think that this is a lot more complicated than just that thing that it said. When you are troubled, it's better not to think about it, but to keep busy with more cheerful things. Uh, there's a difference, I think, between letting yourself kind of wallow in the things that you're upset about and, like, working through it, so I generally don't think it's good to just ignore your troubles and just try to be superficially cheerful. It's just, like, I just don't think that that's a beneficial way to cope with your problems. I'm gonna go ahead and give a soft disagree to that one. First generation immigrants can never be fully integrated within their new country. Strongly disagree. What's good for the most successful corporations is always ultimately good for all of us. Strongly disagree. They're hoarding money, thanks. No broadcasting institution, however independent its content, should receive public funding. I'm gonna soft disagree to that because you have like, I think that things like news might be good if it were more public and like you have like children's education channels that I think should continue to receive public funding. Next! And this is a continuation of the last page, and how you see the wider society. Our civil liberties are being excessively curbed in the name of counterterrorism. Strongly agree. A significant advantage of a one-party state is that it avoids all the arguments that delay progress in a democratic political system. That's really fascisty. I'm gonna go ahead and say no. Although the electronic age makes official surveillance easier, only wrongdoers need to be worried. Strongly disagree. Private is a right that you have and it should not be compromised for the sake of technically making people safer. Like, it's not only wrongdoers that need to be worried, like, especially when you don't know if you'll end up on a fucking watch list for something, you know? The debate, the, 
The death penalty should be an option for the most serious crimes. I strongly disagree with the death penalty. I think that we should be, have a focus on rehabilitation, and also, I don't trust the government to make the decision to kill people. Like, it's, like, the, the Constitution is supposed to protect life, liberty, and happiness, and the death penalty gives the government power to revoke your access to life. In a civilized society, one must always have people above to be obeyed, and people below to be commanded. I strongly disagree. I don't think that hierarchy is, um, inherently necessary to, like, a civilized society. Abstract art that doesn't represent anything shouldn't be considered art at all. Strongly disagree, art's subjective. In criminal justice, punishment should be more important than rehabilitation. I've already said that I don't think that punishment is, like, should be the primary goal. I think that rehabilitation should be the primary goal. It is a waste of time to try to rehabilitate some criminals. See, it gave itself a little bit of soft language in there, in that it's saying, like, do you think that some criminals are not possible to rehabilitate. I'm gonna continue to strongly disagree because I think that no matter what, you should at least try to give people an opportunity to work on themselves and get better, and if people can't get better from whatever it is that made them do some, like, really horrible crime, then they deserve empathy and, like, treatment and not to be just punished for the rest of their lives for, like, something that if rehabilitation is not working, then there's something deeper wrong with them. The business person and the manufacturer are more important than the writer and the artist. Strongly disagree. I already said art is a fundamental expression of humanity, and yeah. Mothers may have careers, but their first duty is to be homemakers. Strongly disagree. It's up to the families themselves to decide what they should do and how to care for their children and whether they're going to primarily be a career person or a, a home person. Multinational companies are unethically exploiting the plant genetic resources of developing countries. Yeah, I'm gonna strongly agree with that. <laughs> My first reaction to reading this was just an extreme side eye. Making peace with the establishment is an important aspect of maturity. I'm gonna strongly disagree. As I said earlier, I think that any kind of consensual governing should be done in a two-way communication kind of way. Like, I think that we as the people should have a say in what the establishment is doing, and, like, making peace with that is essentially submission, and I don't think that that's the proper way to do society. So, go. <laughs> if you got through that okay, you'll find these propositions on religion a breeze. Ooh, this first one might get some people mad at me. Astrology accurately explains many things. That's gonna be a hard no from me. I'm very sorry, my fellow gays. <laughs> you cannot be moral without being religious. Strongly disagree. I'm not religious, and I think that I am still a moral person. Charity is better than social security as a means of helping the genuinely disadvantaged. I strongly disagree. It's, it's a situation where not only do people not exactly have the means to help people when they when they need it, but it's also, if you're relying on people's personal individual judgment of whether someone needs help, they're, you're relying on people's biased evaluations of whether you deserve help. Like, genuinely disadvantaged is a subjective quality at that stage, and I think that it would be better if there was a structural thing in place to help people out. Some people are naturally unlucky. I'm gonna soft disagree to that. Like, I think luck as a concept is a little bit nebulous, but it's not, it's not like a, it's not like a thing like karma where you're just, oh, like, I'm just unlucky. Like, I think generally there's more into it. You can see that there are factors that go into creating circumstances in which people are, like, down on their luck or whatever you want to, however you would like to phrase that. It is important that my child's school instills religious values. Strongly disagree. If I want my children to be exposed to religious ideas, I'll take them to a church or something. Okay, boom. Okay, we're almost done. Page six, finally, a look at sex. Sex outside marriage is usually immoral. Strongly disagree. A same-sex couple in a stable, loving relationship should not be excluded from the possibility of child adoption. Strongly agree. There are lots of kids in foster care, and I think that it would be much better for them to be in a stable, loving environment, rather than being bounced around from foster homes and, and possibly dealing with a lot of psychological issues as a result of that. Pornography depicting consenting adults should be legal for the adult population. I strongly agree. What goes on in a private bedroom between consenting adults is no business of the state. Strongly agree. That's... Why would you think that that's a good idea? <laughs> no one can feel naturally homosexual. I'm gonna strongly disagree with that. These days, openness about sex has gone too far. Strongly disagree on that as well. Ooh, now I'm nervous. I'm a little bit nervous because it's time to press the button. <laughs> it's like, let's tell me what the labels are. <laughs> let's click this thing. Eh. Okay, so this page, before it's showing me my results, is basically trying to explain what the chart it's going to provide looks like. Like, this is 
it's going to put a dot somewhere on this chart. So you have a scale of left to right as far as the economic scale, and then a scale from libertarian to authoritarian on a social scale. I'm not going to read, like, all of this stuff, but I do want to, like, I guess, just read out a couple of highlights that will sort of explain this result. Both an economic dimension and a social dimension are important factors for a proper political analysis. By adding the social dimension, you can show that Stalin was an authoritarian leftist, i.e. the state is more important than the individual, and that Gandhi, believing in the supreme value of each individual, is a liberal leftist. While the former involves state-imposed arbitrary collectivism in the extreme top left, on the extreme bottom left is voluntary collectivism at regional level with no state involved. You can also put Pinochet, who was prepared to sanction mass killing for the sake of the free market, on the far right, as well as in a hardcore authoritarian position. On the non-socialist side, you can distinguish some someone like Milton Friedman, who is anti-state for fiscal rather than social reasons, from Hitler, who wanted to make the state stronger even if he wiped out half of humanity in the process. The chart also makes clear that despite popular perceptions, the opposite of fascism is not communism, but anarchism, i.e. liberal socialism, and that the opposite of communism, i.e. an entirely planned, or an entirely state-planned economy is neoliberalism, i.e. extreme deregulated economy. And then it's showing you where these different people land on this this thing. But um, scrolling past all of this, we will get to my actual results, which is down here. Hello, is anyone surprised that I am way on the left as far as um, economics? And I'm also extremely libertarian as far as the social scale goes of this like up and down axis, the, the X, ac that's the Y axis. What the fuck is wrong with me? So the worst no is anybody is anybody surprised anybody at all <laughs> i'm almost a little bit disappointed that this uh, didn't just outright call me a socialist <laughs> but yeah that was a bit of fun um now you know where i land uh politically on the bo both the economic and the social scales of things extremely far left i am a leftist that is that is a label that i've been comfortable possessing for at least a couple of years now generally i think that um i don't qualify as a liberal anymore so I've claimed leftist, and more recently I have been fairly comfortable claiming the label socialist. I don't think I understand communism well enough to say whether I would agree with communism as a concept, but I'm still in the process of learning about all these things, and, you know, bread tube has gotten its teeth in me, so, uh, that's a thing. <laughs> Alright, let's get rid of that. I hope you enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed making it. It's uh, kind of out of the ordinary for kind of the stuff that I usually do on my channel. Again, it's been a long time since I did stuff with Bandicam and screen recording, as well as doing my normal recording stuff at the same time, so, uh, hopefully this turned out okay. If you liked this video, please give me pretty pretty analytics to look at and comments to read. You can find me on Patreon, subscribe to this channel, ring the bell for notifications, and I really 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 hope that you have an okay day. Bye! Hey hey, it's time for patron shoutouts. Thank you so much to Zendrex, Misty, Alex Badilla, Pinesnake, PNW Atheist Elizabeth, Wellington Marcus, Gretchen Becker, Jenny Swindles, Amber Music, and David Walter. It's $10 a month to get your name read out at the end of every video, and $1 a month to get on the text credits, so go do that thing if you feel like.